Hello, welcome back. It's Michael again. And last time in the last episode, I promised you that we would look at drawing multiple graphs that we can compare some data of different runs. So let's get straight on to that. The class where um, the graph is drawn is the world class in my scenario. So this is where I will start working. Um, and I want to draw five different graphs. I've decided with different um, amount of people isolating at every time. So the percentage isolating will not be a single integer. I will now make this an array. So I will put in there the values that I want to use for the isolation at every run. Um, let's say we start with 0% isolating, then 25%, then 50, then 75. And finally, we try a high number. Let's take 90%. I think it's unrealistic to assume that we ever get 100%. But of course, the type then is not an int, but it is an int array. So here now, percent isolating is an array of ints. Um, and I want to um, have five runs of my simulation with these values here. Because I now have five runs, I need to reset the population multiple times. So the initialization here is done in the constructor initially so far, and that is fine as long as we ran the simulation only once, because the constructor is, is run once. But now that I have multiple runs, I need to reset the simulation. So I make myself a private reset method. Um, and I will now not write the comment for it against my previous advice. I leave that up to you just to not bore you with typing English text, uh, you can fill in the comments yourself. So the reset method, that will do the populating. I take the populate um, call out of my constructor and put it into my reset method. And in return here in the constructor, I just call reset. Um, at the moment, that still has the same effect. But the difference, of course, is that I can now call reset multiple times later on when one run is repeated. So we will also see that here percent isolating now is um, an error because I can't populate takes an int, the number of percent, and now percent isolating is not an int, it is an int array. So I want to um, use one of the values of the int array. And let's say I count which run I'm on. Let's call each run of the simulation a run. So let's say I have a variable for the run I am on. So I will take the value at index 0 the first time, then index 1, and so on. So I need an, um, an int counter here, private int run, which starts at 0. So first I will execute run 0, and there I'm using the first number out of my, um, out of my array of um, percentages. So that's fine. Um, if I run this now, um, I would see that this runs, but um, I currently have not um, taken care of ending a run and progressing to the next run. So the first run um, now has used the percentage zero for isolating, but it will run indefinitely. So I now need to decide um, where we end this run and start the next one. And one possibility that we can do is we can just say if the graph drawing hits the right edge of the screen, then we are done and then we can go to the next run. The graph drawing, of course, the x coordinate of the graph is these is my x offset, offset um, counter here that I have used. So I can just in my act method, method after displaying my numbers in my graph, say if x offset um, has now hit the right edge of the screen. So it's greater than get width because get width gives me the width of the world. I'm in the world class here. So if I'm, um, if my x offset, my graph is on the right edge, then I want to start the next run. So I can think about what do I need to do to start the next run. Every time you think uh, in this situation where you think, okay, what do I need to do now to start the next run? Make yourself a method. Just if you wish you had a method that does what you need, write your code as if you had the method. So I just say 
next run. I just thought I wish I had a method that just initializes the next run. I write my code as if I had that method, which I then of course have to write, but that is a separation of concerns. I can first think of the condition when that should happen and now I can think of um, how I actually make this happen. So if I want to start a next run, what do I actually have to do? Um, first of all, I want to increment my run counter. So now I'm on the next run. This says now I'm at run one. And if I'm at run, well, I have to now see whether I have completed the last run. Because if I increment it the first time, the next time, the next time, it will be fine. But at some stage, I um, will reach the last run. And I'm using the run as an index in this array. And I must make sure that the index doesn't step out of the array and tries to access an element here. Um, so I can say here if run, um, how do I say that? If that is equal, and now I need to, the name of that array, percent isolating, it's this one. Um, if it is equal to the length of that array, so I just say percent isolating dot length. And remember in Java, there's this quirk that the length of an array is not a method call, it's an access to a public field, so it has no parentheses at the end. Um, so if the run is equal to the length of the array, and remember, the, if it is equal to the length, then we are already out of the valid indices, because the valid index is 0 to length minus 1. So if I have it, it just incremented the run and now I'm at the length, then I'm done. So I can say greenfoot dot, I have a method stop that just stops my whole simulation. But if I'm not at the end, then I can now um, start the next run. And so what I do here is I just call the reset method that I made myself here. Um, this one here um, that resets it and starts um, prepares myself for the next run. So here I'm populating it again, but I also have to uh, set the x offset back to zero so that the next graph starts again at the left edge of the screen. So well, logically maybe I like that better if that comes first. So I reset the x offset and then I say I populate the world again with um, now the next percentage isolating. Um, that might be it already. Let's try that out. We run this and pay attention here. The percentage isolating now is zero. The graph goes relatively high up. So we have the maximum somewhere up here. Um, now everyone has been infected, has been cured again. Um, now the graph here hits the right edge of the screen. And there we reinitialize it, we get a new population. It start again, we get another graph. And if we if you look at this, this graph is only very marginally um, lower, but we have now 25% isolating. So we can see 25% of people isolating has very little impact. Now it reset again, we have 50% isolating. We look at the graph and we see actually it is now shifted the curve, then people get infected later and fewer people at the same time are being infected when we have 50% isolating. Now we have an reinitialized again, 75% isolating and we get the fourth graph and we can see it is even more delayed and we get even more time to prepare for our population becoming infected and the peak is lower again. And now the last run with 90% isolated, we see here comes the graph and it's crawling along there and it is in fact um, a lot less high again. So this is really effective. If 90% of people were isolating in our simulation, we are good. Now we are hitting the um, end of the screen in the fifth run and the execution stops. So that is the task that we had set ourselves for today. Um, we can now draw multi -gra multiple graphs with multiple um, percentages of people isolating. Um, it's not really nice yet, I mean, because we have to pay attention, we have to remember which graph is which. So as an improvement next in the next step, we probably want to use different colors for these graphs and have our data being 
um, written on the screen a bit more permanently so that we can see uh, what is what. But we have solved the next step. We can draw multiple graphs. Uh, so that's a good achievement for today. The different colors we'll do next time. Okay, as I said, that's it for today. Um, and I've already told you what we will do next time, that we will try to color the graphs differently. Um, as an exercise, why don't you go ahead and try to do that yourself before you look at the next episode. Otherwise, if you have trouble, come back for the next episode and then we'll do it together. Until then, see you soon. Bye-bye.